Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Azure Whiteboarding Series as part of the Azure Enablement Show. So today we will talk about how Azure OpenAI private endpoints play a vital role in securing the connection between the Azure resources and OpenAI services. So join us. Welcome back. This is Harshita. Joining with me today is Freddie Dubon, who is a principal Azure technical specialist here at Microsoft. Freddie and I will walk through about how to use the Azure OpenAI private endpoints in a typical enterprise digital landscape. Uh, Freddie will show us the architecture diagram followed by a quick demo. And we also have a list of great resources uh, for, for you to get started. And if you have any questions uh, related to the topic that we will be discussing today, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the Azure Enablement Show so you don't miss our future episodes. Hi, Freddie. Uh, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure having you here. Hi, Harshita. It's very nice to be here. Thank you. Uh, awesome. Let's get started. Uh, can you tell us what is a Azure OpenAI private endpoint and why should we use it? Yes, absolutely. So as you know, Harshita, security is always top, top priority for us and for our customers. So when an OpenAI service is, in, is created in, an, in a tenant, it typically has access to the internet. Um, this means that any data that is flowing into the service has to flow through the internet. A private endpoint is the is, is a connection that is created that stays inside of the Azure tenant. So the traffic doesn't have to flow out to the internet, but it stays inside of the Azure network, which provides another level of security for us and for our customers. Um, I'm sure data privacy is a top priority for our customers. Um, can you show us how this solution is built on a whiteboard? Yes, absolutely. Let me go ahead and walk you through. Typically, we have a, an Azure tenant Inside of the Azure tenant, the OpenAI service is created, which, like I mentioned before, it has access to the internet. That, that public endpoint is created. But customers usually have VNets or virtual networks, as we call them. And inside of that, they have uh, resources such, in this case, that I'm showing is the Linux system that needs access to the OpenAI service. Inside of the VNet, there's a, a DNS resolver that is created specifically for that VNet. So in this case, if this Linux machine needs access to the OpenAI, the traffic has to flow out to the internet, into the service, and back again. Uh, in customers and customer environments, we also have multiple VNets, and there's not just one VNet. Sometimes this VNet can be in, a, in the same subscription or in a different subscription. That doesn't make a difference. If you need access to the OpenAI service, you need to traverse out to the internet to get to that service. Uh, in some cases, customers have VNet peering created that allows traffic to flow from one VNet to another VNet. But this, again, doesn't change the fact that traffic needs to flow out to the internet. The only way to secure this traffic is by creating what we call the private endpoint. Private endpoint is what creates an interface inside of a subnet inside of a VNet that allows traffic to stay inside of the Azure network and never leave out to the internet. And this provides another level of security because the traffic doesn't need to leave the Azure network. Got it. Um, a typical customer environment will have multiple regions, right? So will this setup work for a multi-regional uh, architectures? Great question. Thanks for asking that. Yes, this system or this configuration would work for multiple regions. In my case, my OpenAI service is in the East US. My VNets are in the West US. So the private endpoint, you can create it in any region, in any subnet. OK. Um, I know our customers are curious about the DNS configuration of a, a private endpoint setup. Do you want to talk about it? Yes, absolutely. So in the diagram, if you notice, there is a DNS entry on every VNet. That DNS the, is updated in the VNet where the private endpoint is created. So the, the customer doesn't need to do anything. When the private endpoint is created, the DNS in that VNet is automatically updated. So you can continue using the same endpoint name, but now it's pointing to the internal IP address, not the external IP address. The, the challenge comes when you have multiple VNets or multiple subscriptions, 
and you're using that VNet peering because the DNS that is in VNet 2 in my diagram, that one does not get updated. So you either have to manually update the DNS on that VNet or you can update the host file. Okay, okay. Um, we would love to see this uh, demo in action in the console. Can you please show us? Absolutely. Once we're in the console, you see the Azure OpenAI service. When you click on it, you, you see your instance of the OpenAI service. When you click on that, you have the option of going into networking here on the left-hand side. When you go into networking, you have the ability to create a private endpoint. When you click on that, um, you have the ability to create a private endpoint. In my case, I already have one created, so I'm going to click on it. Once you click on it, it tells you where this private endpoint was created, the name of the VNet, the name of the subnet. But what is important here to notice is that it creates a network interface. When I click on this network interface, it tells me that there is an IP address that was assigned to this private endpoint. This is the IP address that is used to connect into this private endpoint. Again, the DNS doesn't need to be updated for that same VNet, but you do have to update the DNS in other VNets because that does not get updated automatically. In addition to this, Ashita, in the networking section of it, there is a firewall and virtual network section. This one causes a little bit of confusion because by default is set to all networks, which means that traffic can come in from any anywhere. But what we need to do is we need to click on disabled. And what causes confusion is that customers think that by setting it to disabled, you're disabling access into the into the service, but in reality, you're disabling intranet access into the service. In this case, when you set it to disable, only data coming in from the private endpoint is going to be allowed. So if we if we are if, if the goal is to set up the traffic only for the private endpoint, we need to set this to disabled. So then at that point, only traffic from the endpoint is allowed. Internet traffic is disallowed. Got it. Um, thanks for the great demo, Freddie. Um, for our builders who want to learn more, can you please uh, share some resources? Absolutely. Yeah, I wrote a blog that goes into the details on how to set this up step by step. That's the first resource. There's also other resources that you might that you can see on the screen. There's also in, they are also in the descriptions down below. Awesome. Um, uh, please check out those uh, uh, great resources. Uh, thanks a lot, Freddie, for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of the day.